You're listening to Your Purpose and Business Podcast, where we connect you to possibilities. I'm your host, Raquel Walters, a two-time best-selling author, millennial speaker, corporate trainer, advocate, and clinical social worker at heart. Your Purpose and Business Podcast will connect you with everyday successful people who will share their impactful stories, insights, challenges, failures, and triumphs on how they're navigating the working world, whether by climbing the 9-to-5 corporate ladder or starting, growing, and scaling their business. So grab your pen and notebook because you'll want to implement the nuggets and tools, strategies, is shared in every episode. Class is in session. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Your Purpose and Business podcast. My name is Raquel Walters, and I'm here with the beautiful and lovely Paradise Rodriguez. And so, guys, Paradise Rodriguez is an ovarian cancer warrior, domestic violence survivor, and human rights activist who has founded over five companies and two foundations since the age of 17. Paradise started building her company from the abandoned home she lived in as a child. And um, her brand now is thriving and and social impacting and is world renowned. So understanding how challenging life could be, um, but knowing she needed to succeed to ensure a better life for herself and those closest to her, Paradise coined the quote, you can sit in the corner and cry, or you can go out and dance in the rain. Either way, the storm is coming. She then put her words into action by traveling around the world to meet its leaders, discussing ways to eradicate human trafficking and finding better resources for veterans, special needs persons, and those escaping traumatic environments. In 2014, Paradise launched the I Can Be Both campaign to encourage women to be their authentic selves. Guys, it's a pleasure and an honor to have Paradise Rodriguez on here, and um, welcome to the Your Purpose and Business podcast. Thank you so much. This is an honor. Thank you for your time today. Oh, thank you for your time today as well, Paradise. And your bio um, has so many different um, moving pieces to it. It's so beautiful because it it does capture um, the many different ways that you are um, living your life um, and how you're impacting, you know, different you know, different areas of life from, from battling with ovarian cancer to, you know, definitely advocating for um, domestic, you know, uh, violence victims, right? As you said, you're a survivor, you said. And um, I know that you have five companies. So there's a lot there and I, I <laughs> want to dive in because I'm inspired and I want to learn and I know the audience want to as well. But before we dive in, just tell us um, something about your self paradise that's not included in this lovely bio. I am a total goofy goober. Uh-huh. I love anime. I love just watching cartoons and snack attacks. Yes. That's my jam. I I embrace being a CEO and all the things I do. But when I don't have to do all that, or, you know, I'm a Harvard woman, when I don't have to worry about school, I kind of just like being at home in my hoodie with some good cartoons or even some jazz and wine. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Awesome. Anime. Yeah, I haven't watched anime, but I've heard of beautiful things about that. Oh, I and, um, <laughs> but I do love a great glass of wine. So, you know, I guess we're similar there. So thank you for sharing that. No, thank so, you. You're welcome. So, so, so Paradise, tell us, you know, you're on a Your Purpose and Business podcast. Do you think you found your purpose? Yes. <laughs> I know yeah. that's very like, yes, I've known my purpose actually since I was maybe about five or six years old. Um, I knew that I would be doing something with children in my life. I just didn't know exactly what. I knew, funny thing is, all the things that I'm doing with my career, my modeling, my performing arts, all those things I have said I was going to do. Mm-hmm. And I told myself, I want to say I was nine and Girl Scouts. And I said, I'm going to make a difference but within my passions. Um, Many times we want to make a difference, but we do it in ways that don't bring us joy or we are working careers to pay our bills and live our lives, but they don't bring us joy. So we're not really serving our purpose then. So I decided early on that whatever it was I was going to do, I was going to pray about it and make sure it was within the realms of what I know in my soul that I'm supposed to do. And that's uplifting the community globally. (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's amazing. And, you know, congratulations on finding your purpose because a lot of the audience that listen um, to this podcast, they're still on that journey. And, and I know purpose for everybody looks different. Um, yes. But there is one thing that stood out to me, um, you, you said in your bio, your quote that you use often, you can sit in the corner and cry, right? Or yes. you can go out and dance in the rain, either way the storm is coming. And, you know, if you could just tell us a little bit more of um, what motivates you or what inspired you to coin that phrase that, you know, I'm assuming um, based on, 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 you know, researching you and watching you and it's including your bio that you use every, everywhere just to encourage yes. yourself. What's the story behind that? Well, it's a bit of a sad story. My siblings and I were living in a house. We didn't have electricity, water, just no utilities. We barely had food. We were literally grilling hot dogs and macaroni and cheese on the barbecue grill or getting wood and putting in, in the fireplace to keep warm or, you know, anything like that. And it was an exhausting time for us. Finally, I told my brothers, I said, okay, you know what, let's go outside and we're going to have fun because things have been hot nonstop. I was still in high school at the time, so I didn't really have the time to say, hey, let's go play. Nice. So I said, okay, you know what, on Thursday, we're going to go play. But then it started storming. <laughs> and when it rains, it sometimes yeah. pours, especially right. in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And so my little brother sat on the porch with me. He goes, great, now it's raining. And I just felt bad. We were running out of food. We were literally on our last pack of hot dogs. We had no more mac and cheese slab, no running water. And I said, what am I going to do? Mm. Well, I looked at them and I said, you can sit in the corner and cry, mm -hmm. or you can go out and dance in the rain. Either way, the storm is coming. Mm -hmm. I took some shampoo and poured it in their hair and we danced and played in the rain and got all muddy and it was not the greatest idea because we had so everywhere <laughs> it was fun and it took yeah. the pressure off two little little children yes I was a child myself yeah but they were even younger and it was hard for them to understand why are we struggling like this why don't we have stable parents in our lives and things like that mm -hmm. For me, it was just the perfect moment to say, listen, we got to make do with what we got. But you tell a child, a three-year-old, that they're just like, what? Why, why can't you make this happen? So I showed them that any time, anywhere, no matter what's happening, you can find something positive. Mm -hmm. And this, this phrase I just held with me in a blossom into so much more than I ever thought it would. It was just something I was saying to them at the time. But throughout my life, I found that I kept repeating this to myself and to my peers that, hey, this sucks. Mm -hmm. It's going to. We have no control over how much this sucks, but we do have control over how we respond to it and how we allow ourselves to carry through this. Um, right now, I am fighting cancer for the third time. I am not in the best mood about all of this because I was supposed to be celebrating being three years free of cancer and said we are starting over. Mm -hmm. I took the time, I grieved, and then I said, the storm's going to happen anyway. Mm. Oh, okay, I have no control over what my body is doing, but I can't control the things around my body. I dove, I went ahead and started school again this semester. I wasn't sure if I was going to do fall semester. I went ahead and pushed my businesses further. I continued to focus on the things that I could control, which primarily was my reactions to what was happening. And then I decided to take a break and go, this is happening for a reason, whether I understand it or not. I'm going to be calm and I'm going to listen, but I'm also going to take action because no matter what, this is happening. And it's just, it's just one of those things that you can take anywhere with your life and apply it. And it kind of gives you a, are we going or not moment. Right. And thank you for sharing with us. And, you know, of course, I know you're not looking for any sympathy or anything because, um, you know, but but definitely um, we know that the things will work itself out. It always does. Right. Um, and, you know, just hearing you, just um, your courageousness and your bravery. I mean, it just speaks volumes because I'm listening to you and I'm also thinking about the many different people out there who are going through something, whether it is um, that they can't find 
food. They can't pay their bills. They don't know, um, you know, what yes. we're, we're, you know, the next paycheck is coming from, or they're dealing with an illness um, as well, or, you know, whatever it is, they, they lost the relationship. I mean, um, this too shall pass and that, you know, yes. you're in the storm. So one thing that you said was that, okay, shift your perspective to what it is that I can control. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, those are the things that's going to um, keep you motivated to push forward. And so um, there's a lot of gratitude in that. There's a lot of resilience in what you just said, but also hearing a piece of your story um, from, you know, um, definitely um, not necessarily being brought up in a stable environment, home environment, to dealing with an illness, to building out your businesses, which we're going to get to. Uh, I mean, I mean, your story is just so inspirational, um, Paradise. Uh, there's so many different ways that we can dissect this. Um, but, you know, I want to find out at the core of everything that you're doing. I mean, what drives you? What motivates you? Is, is that a fair question to ask? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. For me, I refuse to be starving again. I refuse not to have a roof over my head again. And I refuse that the people that I can, you know, help, I refuse to allow someone else to feel the way I felt. Um, transparency through, because of all the things I went through as a child, I grew up severely depressed and I had suicidal tendencies growing up. There was very few action behind it, but in my heart, I knew, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this. The only thing that kept me on this planet were my siblings. The fact that I knew that this isn't about me. I have to be here for them. So put my emotions aside and find a healthier way to cope. Because if I go, who's going to be there for them? And I kind of stay with me. I'm very much a caregiver and caretaker. I have had to learn that it's okay to put paradise first and to not always have to be the caretaker or to let someone come take care of me sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because when you're a caretaker, it's harder to be vulnerable. But what really drives me is my, my persistence and my refusal to give up and allow the people in my community to fail. I know what it's like not to have financial literacy. I know what it's like not to have anyone who loves or cares. And if I can just make an impact on one person, mm -hmm. I've, I've done my purpose. So I, I can't just, I can't sit here and I'm dealing with cancer. Or I'm dealing with, I can't play woe is me. Like, yes, these are very serious circumstances for me, but it's a bigger picture. I'm here for a reason. Right. And when I look out and I know that there's other young girls who grew up not knowing what ovarian cancer was, that didn't have a female role model in their lives, how dare I play pity party when my God has put me here and allowed me to remain for a reason. So my faith is what really drives me, my faith and my persistence to make a great difference. I love it. I love it. And um, guys, there's so many gems here. I know that, you know, um, this will, her story will definitely assist you with whatever it is that you're going on, that's going on in your life. I want to touch on something on um, Paradise. I mean, you started two companies and two foundations, well, five companies, excuse me, and two foundations, but um, you started the, the foundation since you were 17 years old. Am I correct? Your first yeah. foundation at 17? I mean, <laughs> what is a 17-year-old, um, you know, thinking or for you at that time, why was it necessary for you to start your foundation? Give us the story behind starting your foundation. Tell us what your foundation is about. And then kind of just walk us through, I mean, um, the different uh, steps that you've taken um, throughout the years to form your, your five businesses, because I, I feel like um, you're a superwoman, um, but, it, but also um, it just shows that despite, um, you know, your upbringings, despite whatever challenges that you're faced with, that, you know, um, life is filled with possibilities. And so it is a story, I, I'm sure that you're going to tell us now, it is a story of faith, it's a story of a vision and um, possibilities and a story, one of service as well to humanity, you know, so, so take it away. <laughs> well, I had a sister, her yeah. name was Katia. She was born with two thirds of her brain on the outside of her skull, surrounded by fluid. She had a trach and a G two. My sister is, she was severely disabled and 
life wasn't easy for her. She couldn't talk. She couldn't get up and move. She was 100% dependent on the people around her. Mm-hmm. And I remember growing up, I begged God. I said, oh, I want a sister. I want a sister so bad. Mm-hmm. And then he gave me a sister that would need not just some of my love, but all of my love. Mm-hmm. But I needed her love too. And I hadn't realized it so young as a child. It was later on that I realized how much I needed her. Um, when you're not around people with special needs, you tend to be shocked. You tend to be, as a child, you tend to be afraid, quite frankly. Mm-hmm. And I had met other people with special needs and downs and I was afraid. I didn't understand. And when my sister came into my life, that put me in an environment where that was all I saw all the time. And I decided, okay, well, I, I'm nine years old. I, I can't be afraid. Like I, I'm the big sister. I got to be, you know, strong. And so I started asking questions. I'm a very curious person, even as a child. So I wanted to know what was different about them. Why, why did they look like me? Or why were some of the children much, much shorter? Or just any of the differences that was going on. And I realized, it, even in my little small world, this was a big community that didn't have the support trying to go to things like the malls, the movies, or anything like that. Getting my sister's wheelchair in and out and around was extremely difficult. Having handicap accessibility was just like, oh, well, we're lucky there is a ramp. Mm-hmm. So as I was growing up and facing these difficulties with my sister, I said, oh, something's got to be done. <laughs> I'm not a complainer. Like, I'll be grumpy and say, oh, I don't like this. But very much, I don't like this, so how am I going to change this? Right. And then my sister passed away. I was 17 years old. Um, I woke up. It was a Sunday. We were getting ready for church. And I didn't, I didn't realize at first she was gone. I was just like, oh, let's get food. Let's get medicine. We're going to go to church. Woohoo. And then she wasn't responsive to me. Then her medicine kept coming out of the G2. And I was like, are you holding your breath? What are you doing? And I'm like tickling her, trying to, you know, I was like, geez, why are you so cold? So I turned the heat on 80. And I'm just like, maybe it is cold in here. It literally took me at least 10 minutes to realize that my sister wasn't alive. Yeah. And I just kept, I looked at her eyes and I'm like, Katya, but oh, maybe I need to wash her face. And it was like a wave washed over me. And I called and I called and I was like, hey, something's wrong, something's wrong. And then they told me, they said, you know, did you use the ambu bag? And I was like, yes, it's not working. Like she's not breathing. I hooked up the pulse up and she was gone. Oh, wow. And it, I wasn't okay. I kind of went into a state of shock. And then I shut down where most people were spiral out of control, drugs and all these things. I did the opposite, which was just as unhealthy. I shut down. I was very resentful to everything around me. And so then I had to go back to school a week later. We had, my sister hadn't been gone a week and I had to go back to school in Georgia. Mm-hmm. Well, I failed my classes, all of them even classes that I knew I had an A in because I didn't take my finals. And the school wasn't really concerned with, oh, wait, what's wrong? They were just like, you didn't take your finals. Now you're having behavioral problems. Mm -hmm. So I got expelled from high school. And I was like, whatever. Like, I just shut down. And then I was sitting at home and I was like, okay, what are you going to do now? You still have three other siblings to take care of. You now don't have an education, so you're illiterate at this point. What are you going to do? And I just said, I got to get a job. So I started my daycare, taking, you know, a bunch of kids from around the neighborhood and taking care of them. And then some of those kids have special needs. And the mothers trust me because they knew I had taken care of my sister. Yeah. And I realized, well, these children, and this is when I was first introduced into autism, one of my kids was very difficult to behave and they would run away and they would fight and I was able to calm them and understand and I said huh well I didn't experience this with my sister because my sister was not verbal so this is a whole different spectrum for me yeah. and walking through that I said I prayed to God and I asked him I said listen <laughs> I don't know what you want me to do because <laughs> this is a lot and I'm getting attached to these kids I'm still emotionally broken because I just lost my sister yeah. And I decided, I said, okay, now what? And this lady said to me, she goes, oh, you have like a little foundation of children around you all the time. And I said, hmm, 
I do. I do, don't I? She goes, what do you guys do? I said, well, I try to teach them like alphabet and things. And we go to the movies and we do the things that I would do with my sister. And she she goes, why do you do that? I said, well, who else is going to do it? But if they have parents around, their parents are busy trying to survive with all the stuff that an adult has to deal with. Mm -hmm. I'm at home all day and I'm studying to get my GED now. What else am I going to do? Mm -hmm. Give to my community. And it, I didn't realize at the time what was happening, mm -hmm. but I started just kind of collecting people, like a little community of, hey, I care. Even if you just need someone to listen, mm -hmm. now their adults started noticing and it just grew into this, this beautiful project that grew into a family and continuously ever expanding of, okay, what is going, what is the purpose of this foundation? Well, I want to eradicate human trafficking. I learned about that way too young. I want to eradicate domestic violence. I was abused as a child. I want to eradicate being hunger. I'm tired of starving. If I'm starving, that means other children are starving. And then it hit me. I said, I want to find resources for people like my sister and the kids that I'm taking care of. Mm. And an adult said to me, they said, sound like you have a big mission on your hands. I was like, I do. It's going to be a company. Nice. It just like every year I just kept I started with special needs and children I decided I wanted to stop uh, divorce and I said okay well I can't stop divorce okay well what's the core to divorce oh people's problems internally we're pain we're hurting we haven't healed okay how can how can I help that because some of the kids I'm taking care of their problem is their parents are fighting and becoming domestically violent because they're dealing with so much so I can just listen and help and it just Wow. It grew and it grew. The sole purpose of my foundation is to make a global collective impact to bring us from here to here, to stop surviving and start thriving beyond what's expected. And as you know, in our community, mental health mm -hmm. is not always taken seriously. Right. Financial literacy is not always understood and taught to the next generation. I want to change that. The reason I grew up poor, even as a young adult, was because I didn't know how to balance a checkbook. I was literally, as a child, counting my money. Okay, boom, that's done. But I didn't know that I needed to write it all down and, you know, keep it in order. So I decided, well, my community won't be the community continuing that. I'm, I'm cutting that generational curse right now. What's next? Okay, mental health, especially in young Black men. What's hurting? talk to me. I, I don't want to fix you. I want to hear you. Not just not just hear you, but I want to listen to the core of what's going on. And that's really where we started. And we are still today continues on a global just plane is how can I listen to be able to, to address the core issues? Right, right. That, that's, that's an amazing story because it just, it shows that, you know, I mean, obviously you said at the top of this, this, you know, podcast, Cast interview that you found your purpose and since then I mean you know um you've had this vision of helping other people you know that were dealing with the same you know um illness um that your sister um was dealing with and it has blossomed into this worldwide mission um to help more people and you know um that's that's just amazing for me it just speaks to your heart because you know even while you said you were studying for your gd you're like their parents is not going to do it nobody else is going to be available i want to step up and be available i mean that's just special. And the reason why I said that is because a lot of 17, 18 year olds, they're not thinking about how can I impact the world? You know what I mean? It's they're more thinking about, OK, there's themselves and probably want to hang out and party and all of that. But you are already had a mission on your heart. And um, to this day, um, it just speaks um, volumes to how it is that you're able to do um, your work daily in the world. And so for for that foundation, what is it? name of, of your of that foundation because i know you have two the catch a falling star foundation awesome that's the catch a falling star foundation and so what's your second foundation um paradise and then we'll go into your businesses well it hasn't completely grown into a foundation yet but it's still an active campaign it's the i can be both i am a harvard woman yes but i'm also a model yeah and i was told to my face 
that I couldn't be taken seriously as a woman in a higher educational society because I was running around in bikinis and makeup and fashion. And then I was mocked by other fashion industry peers that, oh, you're a nerd, you're this, you're that. And I said, wait, <laughs> darling, do you not understand that I can be both? I can figure out how to er eradicate human trafficking, figure out how to educate women around the world about er um, ovarian cancer while I wear my Jimmy Choo's. You know, there's, yeah. there's nothing wrong. And I, I realized early on that our beauty is a tool. I believe firmly in utilizing all the tools at your disposal. Mm -hmm. So if you have a gift for gab or you're exceptionally attractive, mm -hmm. people tend to stop and listen. They may not take you seriously right away, especially mm -hmm. when your name is Paradise, <laughs> but they will stop and they will appear to pay attention. Then my intellect feeds into the conversation. Now that I have your attention, let me show you where we're going from here. And yeah. I've used that tool and what I call my inner power forward. It's just like a packaging. It's like an advertisement. When you look at a store and you look at, say, a burger and it looks really good. And you're just like, oh, geez. All right. But then you taste it. And you're just like, oh, my gosh. And now mm -hmm. that, that person who's eating that burger has now become inspired to do, be a chef and beyond just by their attention being captured. That's what I find is our power and that we can be intellectually stimulated and embrace our beauty too. I believe that we have to be more than just another pretty face, but there's nothing wrong with feeling good and confidence and unapologetic in our goddessness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I'm, I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm really here for it. Now, it's so true and it's empowering because, you know, you can have it both and you can have it all. And, you know, I, I really don't subscribe to society thinking that, you know, you should choose. You know, I believe in um, living out all your multi passions. You know, um, you know, life is not about existing and being boring. It's about um, being creative and expansive and, you know, doing... Um, every single thing that you know you're interested in you know what i mean and helping people in the process while having fun so um so i am here for that i i love that and i love that you represent that as well um and so paradise tell us about your businesses because i i know that you have a is it a media marketing business um aspect but you know i'll just let you speak on your businesses so i own several companies <laughs> PRM Innovation is a full-on business solutions innovation, but we also, for free, teach financial literacy, which mm -hmm. is the foundational requirements to survive and begin to thrive in this world, in the world of business. You can't do anything without financial literacy. And so the PRM Innovations, whether you are a brand like Coca-Cola and you just need some marketing, or you're a random person who has decided that they want to make this dream come true, but they don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. We do it all. Website, SEO, mm -hmm. uh, business plan, marketing contracts, mm -hmm. everything, HR. We, we put together the foundational needs and we show you how to do it yourself. So you're not always dependent on us doing it for you. Mm -hmm. And like I said, on the um, backside, we do teach financial literacy to those who are trying to grow and thrive. And then if you already have a business of spelling, that's mm -hmm. where we begin. Where, where do you understand the business, the math? Right. The other business is I, the Artemis collections. Mm -hmm. um, we have Artemis Beauty. Optimus, which is my vegan beauty cosmetics. And this year we're coming out with our foundations. I'm very excited. Okay. Um, when you go through chemo and cancer, your skin gets really kind of iffy. Mm -hmm. And so it was hard finding quality makeup that was environmentally friendly and not tested on animals. That was great for my skin. Again, instead of me complaining about it, I decided to do something. I said, okay, well, how can I do this? I have some peers. I go to MIT and other schools. I said, guys, work with me on these formulas. What do we do? I want to wear makeup. Yeah. So let's do this. And I'm sure I'm not the only one having these problems. Yeah. So we established Artemis Beauty. The Artemis Couture, I create little jewelry pieces. And then we take the proceeds yeah. and we yeah. donate them. Artemis Couture was born out of I'm a pageant girl. I am the current Miss World International Ambassador. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah. 
I grew up poor, extremely poor. So my love for pageantry wasn't always met well because I couldn't afford the dresses, the accessories, everything. So I created a jewelry and couture line that the money and the items can then go to other pageant queens and kings as well that are wanting to do this but can't necessarily afford. Pageantry is a great platform. So if you're wanting to learn self-confidence or public speaking, it's a great place yeah. to start. And I think everyone deserves that opportunity. So we have the Artemis collections. Then we have Artemis skin. Okay. Again, during doing chemo and everything, my skin, I have eczema and I needed vegan, environmentally friendly, just safe products. My skin was breaking out. And I'm, I'm a picker. If I, if I see a zit, I'm like, eh, 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 I, I got to make it go away. And it was just making it worse. The dress was making it worse. So I said, okay, what can I do? How can I, how can I make this better? And I decided to develop a skincare line for people like me that can do that, that can clear their skin without weighing it down. Right. And then we have Artemis Wines, yeah. my baby. <laughs> okay. So my grandpa passed away. He had what he would call a backyard vineyard, a, mm -hmm. a mere two, three acres, which the community liked, but it wasn't enough to scale. I never got to meet him, unfortunately. I did meet his widow and spend some time with her. And then I decided that I want to do this. I want to continue on the family legacy because he got the vineyard from his father. Oh. I said, well... You know, I want to do this, but I want to go bigger. I want to create jobs. And I said, oh my gosh, the work that I do here can give people jobs. The money can feed people. And it all comes back. All of it does. The beauty cosmetics stop, help stop domestic violence. The couture items, the, pro the proceeds go to help special needs veterans and people that are coming out like that are poor that just want to live a better life for financial literacy the skincare helps as well for people with special needs and adventures and then our wines help homelessness and hunger everything comes back mm -hmm. and feeds into the foundation for us to give back to our community i know it's not good business but i will admit that most of our profit mm -hmm. goes back into the community Thirty-three mm. percent of everything we have left after paying the staff and paying the government yes. goes back into feeding our community and doing what our humanitarian efforts. And that's the same thing as Lotomus is my baby. We're working on it. I am hoping to open a lounge restaurant mm -hmm. where we, we provide free mental health services mm -hmm. daily. Yes. And it's, I, I'm, I'm French, you know, I'm French and Spaniard. I love food. <laughs> and I want to have a place where we can come together, a community. If you're a community uh, designer, artist, uh, even a community chef that don't always get the opportunities. And I hate to admit it, but people of color are looked over a lot mm -hmm. in these environments. It's, really, it's a very competitive world and even more for people of color. So I decided... Well, I'm going to create an environment that two times a month, we're going to have these showcases where if you're a chef and you're, you're in school and you're trying, you can come get chef for the night. And then the half, half of the tips and proceeds will come to help you, whether you're in school or establishing your business. And then they will go to help our mental health services and feed the community. But the same thing with the fashion designers, the painters, it's artists, rappers, singers, poetry artists. I want a place for us, for a community, just empowerment, mm -hmm. but also really high quality food and wine. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. We have Goal Social. Goal Social is something I've been working on for a while. It's just a members only social club. Mm -hmm. It is grateful, outstanding, ambitious leaders of society. They are people like me who sometimes come from nothing or people that sometimes come from everything, but we want to make a true impact on our community. Not just smile and wave for the cameras when we're like handing a sandwich to someone, but figure out, okay, this person needs to eat now. So we're going to solve this. We're going to feed this person and get them off the street tonight. Yeah. Then we're going to come back and we're going to come to the core. 
Why are you homeless? What skills do you have? And what skills can we build with you so you can be better? What service do you need mental health? Do you need actual physical health services so that way we can put you in a position to where you're not just surviving, you're also thriving. And also goal social creates an environment to where social work can be heavy. It can be very daunting. Yeah. especially on our spirit so we are a community for each other to say hey brother sister person i'm having a hard day today and i, I need someone to talk to you or hey I, I need to go dancing i need to go have a good time yeah. we, we we like our yacht parties yeah. <laughs> sometimes we get yachts donated to us so then we'll do a fundraiser on the yacht mm-hmm. collect the money and whatever cause we're working on and we'll donate it to that and then after it's like all right, guys, let's pop a bottle of champagne and like right. really be proud of ourselves. I am teaching and others are teaching me as well to be proud of yourself. Like you've come far, you're doing a great thing. We don't have to be boastful because right. most of our community service work you won't see online. I'm very strict about that. This is not, you know, a hype or cloud chasing thing. Right. This is for other people. We can pat ourselves on the back later, but this is bigger than us. But then after it, it's okay to feel proud. Yeah. And that's what Girl Social is all about. Wow, wow, amazing. And it just shows how phenomenal you are. And and it, it I love the how you beautifully, you know, uh spoke about the different businesses and your foundations. And it's woven together, you know. Um, it, it all ties into the greater vision and mission of serving humanity and um to be honest with you paradise just listening to your story even though i know that it wasn't always easy and you know you're still going through challenges right now and um, i'm sure we all have different um challenges that we're going through but how it is that you have overcame a time and time again and has shown resiliency and still have um stayed true to that ultimate vision for yourself even if you were unsure what that would look like even um as young as 17 but the lives that you've impacted um so far and will continue to do i mean um it is it's just uh, you know, tremendous. It's amazing. And, you know, for anyone out there that's listening, I definitely want you um, to definitely go ahead and um, see how you can get connected with Paradise and her business, even if it's to, uh, you know, donate um, to, you know, um, her charity, the Catch a Falling Star Foundation. Um, see um, how you can probably purchase a bottle of wine. And I'm sure that some of the proceeds go towards one of the charities as well. You know, but um, Paradise, um, tell us, how persons can contact you and um and connect with you um you know after they've listened to this podcast uh, before we do i just want to tell you one thing you asked me something and it i didn't know the answer because sometimes i just i just am i mm-hmm. just wake up and say this is what i'm going to do yes but something peculiar just happened in my brain in my heart mm-hmm. My community is how I do it. You you said you said how is it that I can throughout everything I've been through still continue on? Yeah. As much as I impact my community, my community is constantly impacting me. Mm. There are people who have absolutely nothing. When I first moved to New York, I didn't know where I was going to live. I didn't have a plan. I woke up on a Sunday. I'm moving to New York. I called my past. I said, I'm moving to New York. Wow. <laughs> and next Monday, that next morning by noon, I was driving to New York. I had no clue what was going to happen. So I slept in my car for that first week. Mm-hmm. There was a homeless man. He didn't bother me. He didn't ask me for anything. He had noticed that I was in my car all day. I was making a plan for, okay, I'm here. What am I going to do? Right. And he knocked on my, he goes, you need some water. And I hadn't even realized, I hadn't stopped to eat, I hadn't stopped to drink. I said, okay, <laughs> he's not wrong. And he goes, come on. And he took me to this restaurant where they sometimes give him a meal. He says, sit down, are you okay? Mm. And I said, I'm okay. And I told him what was happening. He goes, so technically you're homeless. I said, for now, yeah. He goes, you're gonna be okay. And I said, how do you know? He goes, you're sleeping in your car right now. You just woke up and drove to New York. I said, you're right. And he gave me not just words, but encouragement. He gave me hope. And the rest of that week, every night, 
Now I am a woman, and so I was not comfortable, you know, with this guy always around me. And he told me, he goes, I'm not, because I invited him. He says, I'm not going to sit in the car with you. I'm going to stand here and make sure you're okay. Oh, wow. And every night he would sleep next to my car. So one night this guy was knocking on my car when trying to make me move. And the homeless guy, his name was Jack. He got up. He says, leave her alone. Hmm. she's with me she's fine leave her alone the guy was like oh she can't sit here she's always fucked and he goes leave her alone wow. and I never had someone stand up for yeah. me like that and I decided from then I said I gotta I gotta he's right I gotta do this this isn't safe he's right I can't continue on like this and so a few like a few days later I was able to get myself to a place because I just I woke up and decided I didn't have a plan yeah but my community impacts me they're teaching me patience they're teaching me understanding and they're teaching me to keep fighting forward. When I had surgery on the 26th of August, the people that were in my building, they were like the doormen and things, they were encouraging me forward. So this is bigger than just paradise being resilient and strong. Mm -hmm. What they are giving me, I have an obligation to give back. I, wow. It's bigger than just me wanting to feel good and do so. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that. Oh my gosh, it's so powerful. And what a story, Paradise. What a story. It's like Jack was a guardian angel in this. Yes, place, you yes, know? exactly. Yeah, wow. God was a people meant for you mm -hmm. in your life for a reason. We often may not understand it when it's happening. We're kind of just like, why is this happening? What does this person want? And then we realize later on, like Jack has now got a house. He's mm -hmm. taking care of. He's living in upstate New Jersey. Great man. Awesome. But I didn't understand why was this guy who was a homeless vet who had nothing. Why did he care about me? And then that gave me hope to go out. And he was the one to tell me how bad homelessness and mental health and how bad the shelters were here. It was him educating me about the new place I was living in. Yeah. And that furthered what I came here to do. I didn't know why I wanted to move to New York, mm -hmm. but now I do. And it was yeah. because God brought that man into my life to educate and enlighten me. So I just, uh -huh. you're absolutely right. When you need it, the people, they show up. But your, to answer your question, people yes. can easily Google me, Paradise Rodriguez Rondo, or just Paradise Rodriguez. I know my last name's kind of long. <laughs> and on all social media, my handles are two very Paradise. Um, T R O U V E R Paradise. And it's very easy to find me. Um, if you are a person who's suffering from mental health issues, suicide, depression, you need to reach out to someone. The foundation has a hotline, a 24 hour hotline that we will call, even if it's just someone to come sit with you, or it doesn't have to be you. It can be that your child is having behavioral moments and you're at your wits end. You just need someone to come to sit with you. Right. We are here. We are here to listen and work not for you, but with you. I'm um, also any of the websites, everything feeds back into the foundation and into my personal website to where I'm always able to be reached, especially for emergencies. Yes, awesome, amazing. And um, Paradise, it's just an honor and a pleasure again to have you on the Your Purpose and Business podcast. Um, what a story, what a life mission. And I know that you're you're gonna be continuing with this. The journey continues. And um, I'm here to support you um, in any way that I can with, with the RW Consulting Company and the Your Purpose and Business podcast platform. And so um, again, guys, Remember, be good to yourself always, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Bye for now. Thank you for listening. If you've loved this episode, let's stay in touch. Head over to RaquelWalters.com and subscribe to my email list so that I can send you updates on new episodes, exclusive motivational nuggets, and insider knowledge that's only shared when you join our community. Please don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and leave a review as I want to know your thoughts about every episode. Follow me on Instagram at Your Purpose and Business Podcast. And remember, your life is beautiful and this is a part of your journey. So embrace it. Speak to you soon.